9. Maya Campbell Former actress Maya Campbell rose to stardom during the early 90s. Her main claims to fame were her roles on TV series called South Central and In the House. Her fall from grace started in the 2000s, when she struggled with addiction and was seen acting erratically in public multiple times, some of which were caught on video. In 2015, Campbell was accused of two separate incidents. The first happened at a Burger King in Atlanta, where she cursed out a family and accused a child of stealing her wallet. She also harassed the responding police officer, according to an arrest report from that day. Campbell is perhaps best remembered for the shocking footage of her supposedly strung out on drugs that has surfaced over the years. One viral video from 2017 shows a disheveled woman that's allegedly Campbell stating she was looking for crack. According to a self-help guru named Iliana Van Zandt, who worked with the troubled actress in 2012, Campbell was addicted to crystal meth and allowed men to use her to feed her habit. She used the drugs to self-medicate symptoms of bipolar disorder and built up trauma from her past. Her latest arrest happened in 2020 when she was busted for street racing. A woman who regularly ran into Campbell at a local gas station said that she wasn't doing well at all and was often seen asking people for money and rides. Who knows what she's doing now? 8. Phil Spector Although he made his fortune in the 1960s and most young people today have never heard of him, Phil Spector is considered one of the most successful music producers and songwriters of all time. The Grammy Award winner worked with artists including The Beatles, The Righteous Brothers, and The Ramones. But Spector's personal life was not exactly praised. In her autobiography, his second ex-wife Ronnie Bennett accused him of holding her prisoner at his mansion during the 70s. Some of his children also claimed he was extremely abusive behind closed doors. In 2003, Spectre invited actress Lana Clarks into his California mansion after a night out partying and drinking. What started out as a day full of fun went terribly wrong at some point, and Clarkson ended up dead from a gunshot wound to the head. Defense attorneys argued that the struggling performer took her own life, but a jury convicted Spectre of second-degree murder in 2009. He was sentenced to serve 19 years in prison. By then, he was well into his 70s and his health was visibly deteriorating. It was suspected that he was suffering from Parkinson's disease, and in 2014, Spencer lost his ability to speak thanks to a medical condition. He recently died at a hospital in early 2021 from COVID-related complications. 7. Sean Kingston American Jamaican singer Sean Kingston broke onto the music scene in 2007 with his hit song Beautiful Girls after being found on MySpace. He had major success with a handful of other songs, but by 2013 he'd largely fallen out of the limelight. Since then, Kingston has made headlines for not paying for high-end and custom jewelry, leading to speculation that he'd spent all of his fortune he made from music and was trying to uphold a false image of wealth and status. In 2015, he accused representatives from Avian Jewelers of kidnapping him during a business meeting. According to a police report, Kingston chose not to pay the $40,000 balance he owed the company on a $225,000 watch because he didn't feel like the piece was worth that much. The company offered to let him swap it for a less expensive item, but allegedly took the watch back from Kingston and ultimately refused to give him anything in exchange. Kingston claimed that the executives he met with refused to let him out of the vehicle and dropped him off in a secluded area. The bizarre incident came a year after Avi Danjula sued him for also allegedly failing to pay off a $356,000 debt. An additional lawsuit filed in 2016 accused the singer of making a $1,000 down payment on $300,000 worth of necklaces, watches, chains, and rings at a New York City jewelry store and failing to have his manager wire the amount as promised. The company reportedly received just two checks that bounced and had no luck in their efforts to get him to pay up. In 2020, a Florida-based jeweler claimed Kingston had an outstanding balance for some custom pieces, resulting in an arrest warrant. Kingston is now worth only an estimated $500,000 according to Celebrity Net Worth, which amounts to less than the amount of jewelry he's been accused of not paying for. 6. Tila Tequila By the time she shot to fame as the queen of MySpace back in 2006, Tila Tequila modeled for multiple well-known brands like Playboy, Stuff, and Maxim. 
In 2007, she hosted an MTV dating show called A Shot at Love with Tila Tequila and released a single while trying to pursue a singing career. Above all, she was perhaps best known for her provocative fashion sense and behavior. Tila's music failed to take off and her popularity eventually decreased. She dabbled briefly in the adult entertainment industry, and in 2015 she landed a spot on a reality series called Big Brother. But she was booted off the show after a single day when viewers raised the alarm about some concerning anti-Semitic comments she made on social media in her past. She also posted a disturbing article she wrote about openly admitting to being a Nazi sympathizer. Facebook actually banned Tila Tequila. She initially apologized, blaming her behavior on depression and drug addictions. But she kept posting derogatory and bigoted material, and by the end of 2016, she was a despised nobody in the celebrity world. She was eventually kicked off Twitter too, and began spewing out her bizarre and disturbing views on YouTube, but not many people listened or cared. In addition to supporting the alt-right, the former model is also a flat earther, but that's not surprising. The few who have bothered to pay attention to the washdown celebrity have noticed in recent years that her rants have become increasingly bizarre, often consisting of claims that she's the messiah and possessed by Satan. Her drab, makeupless appearance has also generated shock, with many saying she looks like a completely different person than her heyday. 5. Mike Richards After the passing of longtime Jeopardy host Alex Trebek, the show's producers set out to find someone new to take over the reins. As part of their efforts, the show featured a guest rotation that included popular celebrity hosts, including former Reading Rainbow host LeVar Burton, a journalist and NBC News anchor Savannah Guthrie, former NFL quarterback Aaron Rodgers, and more. But the job finally went to Mike Richards, a producer and game show host who'd worked on some incredibly successful shows like Wheel of Fortune, The Price is Right, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, Let's Make a Deal, and Jeopardy itself. The decision was immediately met with controversy from those who believed Richard had been guaranteed the job and that the show merely staged a competition for who would receive the position. People were also upset to learn about Richard's past lawsuits, including two wrongful termination cases that accused him of firing models without valid cause and of making gross remarks about women. Controversial details of his past continued bubbling up to the surface, including his alleged stereotyping of women, Jews, and disabled individuals on his podcast, The Ran Dumb Show. Richards later took the podcast online and apologized for his words, but by then, the damage was already done. Just nine days after being named the new host of Jeopardy!, he stepped down from the position. He initially retained the job as the executive producer of Jeopardy! and Wheel of Fortune with the support of Sony Pictures. But the company must have rethought its decision since he was fired shortly after resigning as a host. 4. The Dixie Chicks The country band once called The Dixie Chicks, now just referred to as The Chicks, achieved impressive fame during the late 90s and early 2000s with multi-platinum records, hit singles, and multiple Grammy awards. But the trio was hit with major controversy in 2003, when the lead singer Natalie Maines criticized then-President George W. Bush and the invasion of Iraq. This wouldn't necessarily be a career-ruining move for most music genres, and even Bush himself didn't seem that put off by the remarks. When asked for comment, he emphasized that the Dixie Chicks are free to speak their mind. But the remarks ruffled feathers for many country music fans, who often harbor deep-rooted patriotism and more conservative political leanings. Radio stations across the U.S. were flooded with thousands of angry calls demanding that they stop playing the Dixie Chicks music, and there were even petitions to boycott the group's upcoming album release and tour altogether. Mains later apologized, and the band has continued to perform over the years but they never fully recovered from the emotional and financial impacts of this backlash. In 2020, they released their first album in over 15 years. 3. Wesley Snipes Wesley Snipes was at the height of his acting career when he was accused of not filing his taxes and sending in false tax returns during the late 90s and early 2000s. In 2006, he responded to a federal indictment by claiming he was a non-resident alien of the U.S., when records claim that he's actually a citizen by birth. This is reportedly a common strategy among self-described sovereign citizens, who believe they're only bound by their interpretation of the country's laws. Snipes eventually had no choice but to face the music in court. 
In 2008, a jury dismissed two felony charges over conspiracy to defraud the government and filing a false claim, but convicted him of three other misdemeanor counts of deliberately failing to file federal tax returns. He was sentenced to serve out three years in prison despite his lawyer's plea for leniency and was ordered to pay about $17 million back in back taxes and penalties. Snipes apologized in court and immediately made a $5 million down payment to the IRS before heading off to prison. He was released in 2013 and continued his acting career. In the years since, he's slowly been making a steady comeback. 2. Steve Yu after his 1997 debut, Yu Sung Jun, better known as Steve Yu, became one of the most popular K pop singers in South Korea. His career was still on the rise when he announced in 2002 that he would begin his mandatory military service in accordance with the country's current laws. But he became a naturalized US citizen right before he was supposed to be drafted, and because South Korea doesn't recognize dual citizenship, the government accused him of deserting the military deported him, and permanently banned him from coming back to the country. Yu continued to focus on music and expanded his talents into acting, but he never achieved the explosive level of fame he experienced before the military scandal. For many years, he didn't seem to mind his home country's banishment. In 2011, he said he had no plans to return, but Yu's tone eventually changed. He petitioned to have his ban lifted, but the government firmly denied his pleas, and he's exhausted all resources. In recent years, he's lived a mostly quiet life as a married family man with four children, with the extent of his fame limited to periodic updates on the draft-dodging scandal and a few YouTube videos showing off his workouts. 1. Aaron Carter Child star Aaron Carter grew up in the shadow of his older brother and Backstreet Boy singer Nick Carter. He pursued his own music career at the tender age of nine with the debut of his first album dating back to 1997. But the young star's adulthood was full of mental health struggles, family issues, and many other obstacles. And while he remained well-known in the celebrity circle, he fell short of sweeping fame. Carter continued to make appearances, one including Dancing with the Stars, and he intermittently released music over the years. But as time passed, he became better known for his battle with addiction than anything else. The troubled star found himself in and out of rehab centers and in constant trouble with the law. This new lifestyle had noticeable effects on his appearance and health. In recent years, he became gaunt and malnourished looking, at one point dropping to only 115 pounds despite being six feet tall. Carter also faced some financial issues. He had a seven-figure tax debt that led to him declaring bankruptcy in 2013. In 2020, he jumped on the OnlyFans bandwagon and started selling adult content at a steep asking price of $50 to $125 per photo, but it failed to achieve the popularity he was hoping for. He released his most recent album, Blacklisted, in the latter half of 2022. Just two days later, he was found dead in the bathtub at his Lancaster, California home at just 34 years old. His cause of death hasn't been revealed, but it's widely believed that Carter died from a drug overdose. His fiancée and the mother of his children, Melanie Martin, told the U.S. son that he relapsed before his death. In a desperate attempt to stop him from abusing drugs, she called local office supply stores and begged them not to sell Carter cleaning products and aerosol cans. But like his other loved ones, she was ultimately unable to stop him from breaking down and succumbing to his demons. Thanks for watching. Would you rather be a one-hit wonder or make tens of millions per year as a controversial and despised celebrity? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.